only on a full moon. Sid Simon, one of my mentors, is a successful speaker, trainer, best-selling author, and poet who splits his time between Hadley, Massachusetts in the summer and Sanibel, Florida in the winter. When I was a graduate student at the University of Massachusetts, Sid was the most popular professor in the Department of Education. One of Sid's highest priorities is his health and fitness. At 87 years old, he still bikes on a regular basis, takes supplements, eats healthy foods, and, oh yes, he allows himself a bowl of ice cream on the one day a month when there's a full moon. When I attended Sid's 75th birthday celebration, over 100 of his family members, closest friends, and admiring former students came from all across the country to celebrate with him. Dessert was the standard birthday cake and ice cream. Only one problem, though. There wasn't a full moon. To cajole him into giving himself permission on this once-in-a-lifetime special occasion, four people who knew of Sid's commitment dressed as moon goddesses and entered the room carrying a huge full moon made out of cardboard and aluminum foil, so there would be a virtual full moon for Sid. But even with all of that loving persuasion, Sid stood firm on his commitment and declined the ice cream. He knew that if he broke his commitment this one time, it would be that much easier to break it the next time he was offered ice cream. It would be easier to rationalize, justify, and explain away his commitment. Sid knew that a 100% commitment is actually easier to keep, and he was unwilling to undermine years of success for other people's approval. We all learned a lot about true self-discipline that night. One final reason 100% is so important. This powerful 100% commitment also figures critically in other important areas, for instance, the workplace. Consider what a commitment to just 99.9% .9 quality would mean in the following work situations. It would mean two unsafe landings at O'Hare International Airport each day, 16,000 lost pieces of mail per hour, 20,000 incorrectly filled drug prescriptions every year. 500 incorrect surgical operations performed each week. 22,000 checks deducted from the wrong account each hour. Your heart failing to beat 32,000 times each year. Can you see why 100% is such an important percentage? Just think how much better your life and the whole world would work if you were 100% committed to excellence in everything you do. Principle 36. Learn more to earn more. If I am through learning, I am through. John Wooden, legendary UCLA basketball coach who won 10 NCAA championships. People who have more information have a tremendous advantage over people who don't. And though you may think it takes years to acquire the knowledge you would need to become super successful— the truth is that simple behaviors such as reading for an hour a day, turning television time into learning time, and attending classes and training programs can make it surprisingly easy to increase your knowledge and substantially increase your level of success. Decrease your television time. The sad reality is the average American watches television six hours a day. If you are one of these average folks, by the time you are 60 years old, you will have wasted 15 years of your life watching television. That's one-fourth of your life. Do you really want to spend one-fourth of your life watching other people, the ones on television who are working, getting rich, living out their dreams, while you are vegging out on the couch? In my very first meeting with my mentor, W. Clement Stone, he asked me to eliminate one hour of television a day. He went on to explain that cutting out just one hour of television a day creates an extra 365 hours per year to accomplish whatever is most important to you. That's over nine additional 40-hour work weeks, two months of additional time. I asked him what he wanted me to do with that extra hour. Anything productive, he said. You can learn a new language, get super fit, spend quality time with your wife or children. Learn to play a musical instrument, make more sales calls, 
or go back to school and get a degree. But what I most recommend is that you read for an hour a day. Read inspirational autobiographies of successful people. Read books on psychology, sales, finance, and health. Study the principles of successful living. And that is what I did. In my life, I've read more than 3,000 books, and that has made a huge difference in my success. Leaders are readers. Self-made millionaire Dr. John Demartini made a list of all the Nobel Prize winners, then made a list of all the greats in those same fields, whether it was poetry, science, religion, or philosophy. He then proceeded to read their works and their biographies. Not surprisingly, John is also one of the brightest, wisest, and most financially successful people I have ever met. Reading pays off. You can't put your hand in a pot of glue without some of that glue sticking, says John. So, too, you can't put your mind and heart into some of the works of these masters without some of it sticking. If you read about immortals, you increase the possibility of leaving an immortal effect. The result has been enormous for me. The late Jim Rohn, one of America's foremost motivational philosophers, suggested using that one extra hour a day to read. He taught me that if you were to read one book a week, in ten years you'd have read 520 books, and in twenty years, more than 1,000 books, enough to easily put you in the top one percent of experts in your field. Add to those the books from masters in related areas, and you have an edge that others simply don't have. Learn to read faster to read more. If you read more slowly than you'd like, consider taking a course to increase not only your reading speed, but also how fast you absorb the information. The best resource I've found is the photo reading course developed by Paul Sheely. It's available as a weekend workshop in many cities around the world, or as a self-study course from Learning Strategies Corporation. You can learn more about the course at www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. A Weekly System for Getting Smart Take a look at the extensive reading list I've included on the companion website for this book at www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. Reading books like these will help you achieve mastery in those areas of life that are most central to your happiness and fulfillment. They contain some of the best time-tested wisdom, information, methodologies, systems, techniques, and secrets of success that have ever been recorded. If you make a commitment to read one book a week, review what you have read, and apply at least one thing you learn from each book, you will be miles ahead of everyone else in creating an extraordinary life. All of the books on this list are ones that have helped me attain the high level of success I have achieved. Many of them are timeless classics and should make up the core of your personal success library. Others contain the most recent breakthroughs in psychology, neuroscience, quantum physics, nutrition, and health. If you can't yet afford to purchase your own books, borrow them from friends or your local library. Study the Lives of Great People in addition to the list on the website, some of the best books out there are biographies and autobiographies of great people. By reading them, you will learn how to become great yourself. Former New York Mayor Rudolph Giuliani writes, Political biographies have long been on my reading list. John F. Kennedy's Profiles in Courage made a huge impression on me as a teenager. I consumed biographies on Lincoln and Washington with the same enthusiasm I had for those on Ruth, Gehrig, and DiMaggio. When I heard Rudy Giuliani speak recently in Santa Barbara, he told us that it was what he had read years ago in biographies of Winston Churchill, insights about how Churchill led England through the bombings of World War II, that helped him lead New York after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. If you are going to watch television, I also suggest you watch Biography on A&E television networks. I am always inspired by the lives of the people the program chronicles. Attend success rallies, conferences, and retreats. I remember the first time I attended a success rally. 
Thousands of people were on hand to learn from many of the greatest speakers, trainers, and motivators of our day. You, too, can access these powerful learning experiences by attending rallies, conferences, and retreats. Additionally, benefiting from the excitement and inspiration of your fellow attendees and the networking that goes on at these events. Keep an eye out for ads in your local paper. Another great resource that has developed in the last five to ten years is an abundance of telesummits and video summits available on the Internet. Telesummit usually consists of eight to twenty-four experts speaking for an hour apiece over one or more days. Just type the word telesummit into your web browser and you will find them on lots of topics. Be teachable. In a humble state, you learn better. I can't find anything else very exciting about humility, but at least there's that. John Dooner, chairman and CEO of Interpublic, the world's largest advertising conglomerate. While I was writing this book, I sat next to Skip Barber on a flight to Las Vegas. Skip trains people to drive high-performance cars under actual racing conditions. When I asked him what distinguishes his best students, he replied, The ones who get it are teachable. They're open to learning. The ones who don't make it think they know everything already. You can't teach them anything. To learn and grow in life, you need to be teachable, too. You need to let go of already knowing it all, needing to be right and looking good, and open yourself to being a learner. Listen to those who have earned the right to speak, who have already done what you want to do. I'm reminded of Dr. Billy Sharp, my boss when I worked at the W. Clement and Jesse V. Stone Foundation, and one of the smartest men I ever knew. Whenever I attended meetings where he visited with outside consultants, Billy was always strangely quiet. One day I asked him why he seldom spoke in these meetings. Not only was his reply revealing, but it also taught me why he knew so much. I already know what I know, he said. If I'm talking to impress someone else, I don't learn anything new. I want to learn what they know. And he always did. It is better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one, than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. Whitney M. Young, Jr., American Civil Rights Leader, recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Be prepared when opportunity knocks. In his book, Live Your Dreams, Les Brown tells the story of how he dreamed of becoming a popular Miami disc jockey. When I set out, he says, I had no idea how I would do it. But I knew life would present the opportunities if I was prepared and in a position to take advantage of them. Les shadowed his high school drama teacher, learned as much as he could about linguistics. Together they worked on Les's speaking voice. Soon Les began developing his own on-air style of patter, pretending at school that he was performing on the radio. He sought out mentors who could prepare him for the opportunity of being on the air. And after high school, though Les earned his wage as a city sanitation worker, his persistence landed him a job as a late-night gopher at a prominent Miami radio station. Les immediately took advantage of the opportunity to learn even more. He absorbed all he could, hanging around the disc jockeys and engineers and practicing what he learned in a makeshift cardboard studio he created in his bedroom. His microphone was a hairbrush. Finally, one night, a DJ couldn't finish his show, and Les had his chance to get on the air. When the chance came, not only was Les prepared to be on the radio, but he was also prepared to be great on the radio. The style, patter, dialogue, and broadcasting skills he had worked so hard to develop paid off instantly. Les was an immediate hit, and he was later promoted to fill-in DJ, then finally became a full-time disc jockey with his own radio show. What do you need to do to get ready? If you're an industry expert and believe your consulting business would skyrocket after presenting a workshop at the National Convention, why not get prepared now by writing your speaker's kit, joining Toastmasters, outlining and practicing your speech, and getting ready to be on the platform? If you want a promotion at work, why not ask your boss what it takes to become promotable? 
Perhaps you need to go back to school and get your MBA. Or maybe you need one year of accounting experience. Or perhaps you need to learn the latest software programs. Do that, and when the next promotion comes around, you can say, I'm ready. Do you need to learn a new foreign language? Could you develop advanced skills, more resources, or new contacts? Do you need to get your body into better physical shape? Should you expand your business skills, sales skills, or negotiating skills? Are you learning new skills on the computer, such as PowerPoint, Keynote, Graphic Design Suites, Photoshop, or Excel? Do you need to learn golf so that you can make business deals on the golf course? Would it improve your home life and marriage by taking dancing classes with your spouse? Are you learning to sail or play tennis? Do you need to learn to play a musical instrument, take acting class, or learn how to write better to get where you want to go? Whatever you need to do to get ready, start now by making a list of the top ten things you could be doing to be ready when the opportunity finds you. Take classes on your own time. Read books. Get new skills. Go to your industry's trade show. Dress the part. Look like a player before you're there. As Les Brown's story teaches us, all it takes is passion, persistence, and the belief that someday the opportunity will come. Start getting ready now. Attend human potential trainings. Nothing changes until you do. Source unknown. If you suddenly discovered you were driving with the emergency brake on, would you push harder on the gas? No. You would simply release the brake and instantly go faster, without any additional expenditure of energy. Most of us are going through life with the emergency brake on. It's time to release the limiting beliefs, emotional blocks, and self-destructive behaviors that are holding you back. In addition to the techniques we've already covered in Principles 10, Release the Brakes, 32, Transform Your Inner Critic into an Inner Coach, and 33, Transcend Your Limiting Beliefs, the two most powerful methods for releasing the brake are personal development training and individual therapy. If I were to attribute my success to any one thing, it would be the hundreds of personal development seminars I have attended over the past 50 years. All of us, including me, need outside influences to help us break through our habitual patterns and assist us in creating new ways of thinking and behaving. Invest in your team's education. I recently saw this brilliant gem on the Internet. The CFO, chief financial officer of a company, asks the CEO, What happens if we invest in developing our people and then they leave us? The CEO responds, What happens if we don't and they stay? To stay competitive in today's world, you must focus not only on your own learning and development, but also on your team's development. Whether you are the CEO of a large corporation, the owner of a mid-sized company, a regional sales manager, a small entrepreneur, a school principal, or the leader of a network marketing downline, you have to make sure that everyone in your organization is constantly learning and growing, or you and your organization will ultimately be left behind. In Japan, the average worker receives many more days of training a year than workers in America. This may be one of the reasons they have such a huge share of the American car, camera, and consumer electronics markets, including such popular brands as Toyota, Nissan, Mazda, Subaru, Lexus, Acura, Infiniti, Nikon, Fujifilm, Sony, Panasonic, and Sharp. Invest in a lending library of books, CDs, and DVDs. Send people to trainings. Hire trainers to do in-house trainings. Include both personal and professional development trainings. Two resources that have transformed both individuals and work groups, and in many cases entire companies, are my Breakthrough to Success week-long training and my nine-month Train the Trainer program. At the live training program, Breakthrough to Success, thousands of people around the world have achieved their loftiest goals, from becoming best-selling authors to launching new businesses, doubling their incomes, tripling their time off, funding new charities, becoming the top salesperson, and so much more.
Over several days, I help you get clear about what you want, help you overcome the obstacles that have been holding you back, and guide you as you write a step-by-step -step plan to take your life to the next level. Visit www.canfieldtraining.com for information. My live Train the Trainer professional program for trainers, coaches, counselors, educators, and others meets three times over nine months and develops you as a human potential trainer who can bring the success principles, exercises, and transformational techniques to your office, classroom, therapy practice, or workshop audiences. I actually equip you with the skill set, content, exercises, workshop design, training tools, and mindset necessary to get results with any group or individual. You can attend live sessions or study in the convenience of your home or office. Visit www.canfieldtrainthetrainer.com. Finally, see the Suggested Reading and Additional Resources for Success page on our website at www.thesuccessresources.com forward slash resources. I've listed organizations and trainings that I've personally found most powerful and most impactful to my life and to the lives of my family, staff, clients, and students. Visit the websites of these organizations, call and talk to these companies, attend their guest events, and then make a decision to attend a few that feel right for you and your team. Commit to lifelong learning. Realize that the amount of knowledge and information available in the world is growing at a mind-numbing pace. In fact, it has been said that all human knowledge has doubled in the last ten years. Don't expect this trend to slow down. More alarming, the information that allows you to be successful, to be on the cutting edge of your career and profession, is evolving at the same pace. That's why you must commit to lifelong self-improvement and learning, improving your mind, increasing your skills, and boosting your ability to assimilate and apply what you learn. Principle 37 Stay Motivated with the Masters A successful person realizes his personal responsibility for self-motivation. He starts with himself because he possesses the key to his own ignition switch. Kemmons Wilson founder of Holiday Inn Hotels. So many of us today are trained by the media, by our parents, by our schools, by our culture, to have limiting, it's not possible, I don't deserve it, beliefs. This early conditioning is often so ingrained that it takes continual external motivation to overcome the decades of negative effects and move toward more success-oriented thoughts and attitudes. Attending a weekend workshop isn't enough. Neither is reading a book or watching a training video. What truly successful people do is listen daily to audio programs from the world's most renowned motivational masters, in the car, at home, and at the office, even if it's just for 15 minutes each day. Learn virtually anything you want or need to know. The average person commutes 30 minutes each way to and from work. In five years, that's 1,250 hours in the car, enough time to give yourself the equivalent of a college education. Whether you're commuting by car or train, riding your bike, or going for a run, listening to audio or video recordings can give you the edge you need to excel in virtually any area of your life. You can keep yourself motivated, learn a language, learn management skills, learn sales and marketing strategies, learn better communication, learn about holistic health, and more. You can even discover the success secrets of the world's most powerful industrialists, business titans, real estate moguls, and entrepreneurs. Just how motivating can the masters be in your life? Hours and Hours of Listening it all started when a co-worker asked Elaine Fossey for help with a fundraiser for the Fort Lewis Family Support Group in Tacoma, Washington. But between working full-time and finishing her B.A., Elaine had no extra time to spend in the kitchen making something for the group's upcoming bake sale. Instead, she opted to quickly make and bottle the brightly-hued homemade salad dressing 
for which she'd perfected the recipe two decades earlier, packaging her batch of raspberry dressing into recycled sterilized bottles. Elaine added a cute label and topped the bottles with raffia ribbon. Almost overnight, orders started to pour in. For the next 18 months, Elaine earned money for the troops by selling her dressing at additional bazaars and bake sales. Knowing she had a high-end niche product that was great-tasting, low in calories, plus free of dairy, soy, salt, gluten, preservatives, and additives, she reasoned that her salad dressing was ready for a larger market. In fact, the dream of starting a business began to take form. But before Elaine took the plunge, she wanted to test the waters further by selling at large farmer's markets in Bellevue, Washington, and Cannon Beach, Oregon, more than two hours' drive in each direction. Maybe I can use the road time to gain insights on how to grow and expand my business, she thought. In her search for audiobooks, she discovered The Success Principles on CD at a Barnes & Noble. After listening to the first disc, she was hooked. Each time she left her driveway for the long trek, she popped a disc into the player, and by the time she reached the market, she would be energized. More often than not, however, the weather in Washington and Oregon made standing under a tent miserable, as torrential rains blew in or 101-degree temperatures heated the pavement. Self-doubt, fright, and exhaustion sometimes crept in. But so did the lessons she'd learned from the success principles. Lessons like feel the fear and do it anyway, visualize, act as if, go the extra mile. Instead of giving up, Elaine put those principles into action. She created beautiful displays. She put up great signage. She added fresh flowers to her table. She greeted every potential customer with a positive attitude and a smile. And each time her drive to the Bellevue market took her past the local Whole Foods market, she'd tell herself, My product is going to be on those shelves one day. Sometimes she'd even stop and walk the aisles, repeating out loud her positive affirmation in the face of so much competition. Although she didn't know exactly how to get her dressings into Whole Foods, Elaine knew she didn't want to go into debt, hire a broker, or pay for shelf space. Instead, she expanded her line to include blackberry, cranberry, and marionberry salad dressings, as well as organic versions of each one, all the while focusing on her Whole Foods dream. Soon, she was negotiating distribution in more than a dozen other stores and saw increasing online sales, too. And then it happened, a message on her answering machine. This is Denise from the Whole Foods corporate office in Bellevue, I hear you have a product we're interested in. It worked. It actually worked, Elaine thought to herself. All those principles paid off. When Whole Foods invited her to audition her dressings, Elaine set up everything she needed to make a good impression, and as she handed a sample to Denise, she confided, Seeing my dressings in Whole Foods is my goal, my dream. Denise's eyes widened as she tasted Elaine's dressing. Oh, my gosh! And you have seven flavors? Elaine's dressings now stand proudly on the shelves of all the Washington and Oregon Whole Food stores, with distribution in California now under discussion. Of course, motivation is not permanent, but then neither is bathing. But it is something you should do on a regular basis. Zig Ziglar motivational speaker, author of See You at the Top. Where to get the best motivational audio programs? You'll find my list of favorite motivational audio programs in the suggested reading and additional resources for success on the companion website at www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. You'll find a complete and constantly updated list of recommended audio programs on success, wealth building, health, relationships, and more. I also highly recommend five audio programs that I have produced to help you become more successful in every area of your life. Maximum Confidence, Self-Esteem and Peak Performance, The Aladdin Factor, The Success Principles, A 30-Day Journey from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be, and Effortless Success, 
Living the Law of Attraction. They are all available at www.jackcanfield.com. Principle 38 Fuel your success with passion and enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is one of the most powerful engines of success. When you do a thing, do it with all your might. Put your whole soul into it. Stamp it with your own personality. Be active, be energetic, be enthusiastic and faithful, and you will accomplish your object. Nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Ralph Waldo Emerson, American Essayist and Poet Passion is something within you that provides the continual enthusiasm, focus, and energy you need to succeed. But unlike feel-good motivation derived from external sources, true passion has a more spiritual nature. It comes from within, and it can be channeled into amazing feats of success. Filled with Passion The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word entheos, which means to be filled with God. When you are filled with spirit, you are naturally inspired and passionate. Sometimes that passion expresses itself in a dynamic and energetic way, like the hustle of a champion athlete who was on fire. Other times it expresses itself in a more peaceful and calm way, like the passion of Mother Teresa for ministering to the needs of the dying in Calcutta. No doubt you know or have met people who are passionate about life and enthusiastic about their work. They can't wait to get up in the morning to get started. They are eager and energetic. They are filled with purpose and totally committed to their mission. This kind of passion comes from loving and enjoying your work. It comes from doing what you were born to do. It comes from following your heart, trusting your joy as a guide. Enthusiasm and passion come as a result of caring about what you do. If you love your work, if you enjoy it, you're already a success. Your success is guaranteed. My son Kyle, a.k.a. El Cool Kyle, is a hip-hop artist in Berkeley, California. Though he's been struggling to make it financially for the last 18 years, he has already created 10 full-length CDs, performed at Woodstock 99, opened for KRS-One and Public Enemy, performed with Joan Baez, Jurassic Five, Dilated Peoples, and other major artists, sat in as a radio guest DJ, taught hip-hop at Richmond High School in California, and co-founded a record label, Baylondo Records. Learn more about Kyle at www.thesuccessprinciples.com forward slash resources. He has doggedly pursued his dream and never given up on his art. So even if he were never to make a lot of money or become a rap superstar outside of the Bay Area, Kyle is already successful. Because when you are happy doing what you love, you've already won. When you do something you love with passion and perseverance, you are already a success. A Passion for Teaching Hobart Elementary School is the third largest elementary school in the United States and is located in a gang and drug-infested Los Angeles neighborhood. The fifth grade students in Teacher Rafe Esquith's classroom, who all speak English as a second language, score 50 points higher in math and reading than the students in the rest of the school. Their grasp and mastery of the English language is gained through learning and performing the plays of Shakespeare. To date, the Hobart Shakespeareans have performed 15 full-length plays to packed audiences from the White House to the inner city. Among their passionate supporters are actors Sir Ian McKellen and Hal Holbrook. When you walk into Rafe's classroom, you notice the large banner. There are no shortcuts, draped above the chalkboard. The nearby Walls of Fame feature school pennants from Stanford, Princeton, Yale, and UCLA where many of his students have sought higher education. School officials from all over the world sit in his classroom to observe the educational miracles at work. Not only was Rafe honored as Disney's National Teacher of the Year, but he is also the sole teacher in history to be presented with a National Medal of the Arts. Queen Elizabeth has given him the highest tribute bestowed on a non-British citizen. 
he was named a member of the British Empire. What has fueled this devoted, visionary public school teacher to work twelve-hour days, six days a week, fifty-two weeks a year for thirty-one years? Passion and enthusiasm. There's nothing he loves more than bringing the joys of literature, theater, music, science, math, and plain old fun to hundreds of kids. The results? He infuses his students with their own joy for learning— boosting their self-esteem while boosting their academic performances. As Rafe puts it, I'm a very ordinary fellow who made one smart move. I would not allow today's educational fiasco of systemized mediocrity and uniformity to crush me into the robot so many potentially good teachers become. I kept my own spirit and personal passions alive in my class, and as a lover of Shakespeare— have passed on that excitement to eager young minds. In my school's neighborhood of failure and despair, success and excellence have become the standard rather than the exception to the rule. And best of all, the kids and I have a hell of a good time working so hard and climbing to great heights. It's a wonderful life. How to Develop Passion How can you develop passion in the most important areas of your life? Let's look at your career for a moment. That's the work that occupies the majority of your week. Recent Gallup polls and studies by Mercer report a full one-third of Americans would be happier in another job. Ask yourself, am I doing what I love to do? If you aren't, and you had the choice to do anything you wanted to do, what would that be? If you believe you can't make money doing that, imagine that you just won the lottery. After buying your expensive mansion, a Rolls Royce, and all the toys and travel you wanted, what would you do with your day? What you're doing now, or something different? The most successful people I've met love what they do so much, they would actually do it for free. But they're successful because they found a way to make a living doing what they love to do. If you're not skilled enough to do the work you'd love to do, make time to educate yourself so you are. Do whatever it takes to prepare, working part-time in your dream job or even volunteering as an intern, while still maintaining your current job. Pay attention, too, to those times outside of the office when you feel the happiest, the most joyous, the most fully engaged, the most acknowledged and appreciated, and the most connected with yourself and others. What were you doing at those times? What were you experiencing? Those events are indicators of ways you can bring passion into your life outside your day-to-day -day work. It tells you what you would be happiest doing with your time. How to Keep Passion and Enthusiasm Alive Passion is a powerful tool for success and, as such, deserves to be an area you consistently work on. Passion makes your days fly by. It helps you get more done in less time. It helps you make better decisions. And it attracts others to you. They want to be associated with you and your success. So how can you maintain passion and enthusiasm every day? The most obvious is to spend more time doing what you love to do. As I have discussed in earlier chapters, that includes discovering your true purpose, deciding what you really want to do and have, believing you can do it and have it, deliberately creating your dream career, delegating as much as you can that is not your core genius, and taking concrete steps toward the attainment of your goals. Another key to passion and enthusiasm is to reconnect with your original purpose for doing anything that you do. When you look underneath the surface of the things that feel like have-tos rather than want-tos, you'll almost always find that there is a deeper purpose that you are passionate about. You may not love the idea of sitting in a pediatrician's waiting room with your child, but when you get underneath it, aren't you passionate about your child's health and well-being? Ask yourself, what is the why underneath what I am doing? If you can get in touch with that, it is a lot easier to get enthusiastic about whatever it is that you have to do. You'll discover that all of the things you feel like you have to do are really choices that you are making that serve some higher purpose— such as feeding your family, creating security for your future, staying out of jail, or contributing to your health and longevity. Once you realize that these are choices you are making, 
you realize that you can make one more choice, and that is the choice of your attitude. Even if you are trapped in an elevator with three strangers, you have a choice about your attitude. You can choose to be grumpy about not getting your work done, or you can see it as an opportunity to meet some new people on a deep level. The choice is up to you. Why not choose to do everything you do with joy and enthusiasm? And here is one final thought. When you express your passion and enthusiasm, you will become a magnet to others who will be attracted to your high level of energy. They will want to play with you, work with you, and support your dreams and goals. As a result, this extra manpower and the resources they bring means you will ultimately get more done in a shorter period of time. Part 3 Build Your Success Team Alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much. Helen Keller, American author, lecturer, and advocate for the blind. Principle 39. Stay focused on your core genius. Success follows doing what you want to do. There is no other way to be successful. Malcolm S. Forbes, publisher of Forbes magazine. I believe you have inside you a core genius, some one thing that you love to do and do so well that you hardly feel like charging people for it. It's effortless for you and a whole lot of fun. And if you could make money doing it, you'd make it your lifetime's work. Successful people believe this, too. That's why they put their core genius first. They focus on it and delegate everything else to other people on their team. Compare that to the other people in the world who go through life doing everything, even those tasks they're bad at or that could be done more cheaply, better, and faster by someone else. They can't find the time to focus on their core genius because they failed to delegate even the most menial of tasks. When you delegate the grunt work, the things you hate doing, or those tasks that are so painful you end up putting them off, you get to concentrate on what you love to do. You free up your time so that you can be more productive, and you get to enjoy life more. So why is delegating routine tasks and unwanted projects so difficult for most people? Most people are simply afraid to give up control or reluctant to spend the money to pay for help. Deep down, most people simply don't want to let go. Others, possibly you, have simply fallen into the habit of doing everything themselves. It's too time-consuming to explain it to someone, you say. I can do it more quickly and better myself anyway. But can you? Delegate completely. If you're a professional earning $125 per hour, and you pay a neighborhood kid $10 an hour to cut the grass, you save the effort of doing it yourself on the weekend and gain one extra hour when you could profit by $115. Of course, the one hour doesn't seem like much. Multiply that by at least 20 weekends in the spring and summer, and you discover you've gained 20 hours a year at $115 per hour, or an extra $2,300 in potential earnings. Similarly, if you're a real estate agent, you need to list houses, gather information for the multiple listings, attend open houses, do showings, put keys in lock boxes, write offers, and make appointments. And if you're lucky, you eventually get to close a deal. But let's say that you're the best closer in the area. Why would you want to waste your time writing listings, doing lead generation, placing lock boxes, and making videos of the property when you could have a staff of colleagues and assistants doing all that? thus freeing you up to do more closing. Instead of doing just one deal a week, you could be doing three deals because you had delegated what you're less good at. One of the strategies I use and teach is making complete delegations. It simply means that you delegate a task once and completely, rather than having to delegate it each time it needs to be done. When I hired the gardener for my Santa Barbara estate, I said, I want my grounds to look as close as possible to the grounds at the Four Seasons Biltmore in Montecito, using the budget I'm providing you. When I go to the Four Seasons, I don't have to check whether the trees need to be trimmed or the automatic sprinklers are working. 
Someone else is in charge of that. Well, I want the same luxury at my home. With that as our operating principle, I said, here's the budget. Take charge of the grounds. If I'm ever not happy, I'll let you know. If I'm not happy a second time, I'll find someone else. Does that feel like a workable agreement? My landscaper was, in fact, very excited. He knew he wouldn't be micromanaged, and I knew I wouldn't have to worry about it again. And I don't. See what I mean? Complete delegation. When my niece came to stay with us one year while she attended the local community college, we made another complete delegation. The grocery shopping. We told her she could have unlimited use of our van if she would buy the groceries every week. We provided her with a list of staples that we always want in the house. Eggs, butter, milk, ketchup, and so on. And her job was to check every week and replace anything that was running low. In addition, my wife planned meals and let her know which items she wanted for the main courses. Fish, chicken, broccoli, avocados, and so on. The task was delegated once and saved us hundreds of hours that year that could be devoted to writing, exercise, family time, and recreation. Become a con artist doing what you love to do. The biggest mistake people make in life is not trying to make a living at doing what they most enjoy. Malcolm S. Forbes Strategic coach Dan Sullivan once stated that all entrepreneurs are really con artists. They get other people to pay them to practice getting better at what they love to do. Think about it. Ron Howard loves to make movies. People pay him big money to make movies. Every time he works on a film, he learns more about directing, producing, and filmmaking. He gets to practice and hang out with other filmmakers, all the while getting paid for it. Anthony Robbins is a speaker and a trainer. He loves speaking and training. He has arranged his life so that people are constantly paying him large sums of money to do what he loves to do. Or consider baseball great Miguel Cabrera of the Detroit Tigers. It takes him about one second to hit a home run, as long as it takes for the ball to meet the bat. He earns $22 million for about 44 seconds of batting time per year, so he has gotten really good at making the bat meet the ball. That's where he makes his money. That's where he puts all his time, practicing and getting ready for the bat to meet the ball. He has found his core genius and devotes the majority of his waking hours to perfecting his genius. Of course, most of us are not on par with Ron Howard, Tony Robbins, or Miguel Cabrera. But the fact is that we could learn a lot from their level of focus. Many salespeople, for example, spend more time on account administration than they do on the phone making sales, when they could hire a part-time administrator or share the cost with another salesperson to do this time-consuming detail work. Most female executives spend too much time running their household, when they could easily and inexpensively delegate this task to a cleaning service or part-time mother's helper, freeing themselves to focus more on their career and spend more time with their family. Unfortunately, most entrepreneurs spend less than 30% of their time focusing on their core genius and unique abilities. In fact, by the time they've launched a business, it often seems entrepreneurs are doing everything but the one thing they went into business for in the first place. Don't let this be your fate. Identify your core genius, then make complete delegations to free up more time to focus on what you love to do and do well. Do what you love. The money will follow. Starting out to make money is the greatest mistake in life. Do what you feel you have a flair for doing, and if you are good enough at it, the money will come. Greer Garson, Academy Award winner for Best Actress Diana von Wellenitz Wentworth is someone who is always focused on her core genius while following her heart, and has been wildly successful as a result. Her greatest pleasure was always to be cooking something and gathering people around the table to share at a deep level over food. She was always reaching for a deeper connection, what she calls a sense of celebration at the table. So she started her career writing books about how to give a party and do everything ahead of time so you can actually be present and connect more deeply with the people you invite. Then in May 1985, she went on a trip to the Soviet Union 
with a group of leaders in the human potential movement, where she noticed that, for the most part, these leaders were all loners. Even though they were quite well known for their books and their impact in the world, they didn't know each other. When she returned, she realized that her life purpose had always been more about connection than food. She had just used food as a catalyst. That realization led her to create the Inside Edge, an organization that hosted weekly breakfast meetings in Beverly Hills, Orange County, and San Diego, California, where nationally recognized people of vision came together to share their knowledge and wisdom on human potential, spirituality, consciousness, and world peace. Speakers included people such as Mark Victor Hansen and me, motivational expert Anthony Robbins, management consultant Ken Blanchard, actor Dennis Weaver, counselor the Reverend Leo Booth, and authors Susan Jeffers and Dan Millman. In addition to listening to an inspirational speaker, participants would network, encourage each other to dream bigger, and support each other's projects. Eighteen years later, the Orange County chapter still continues to meet twice a month. Diana has gone on to write and co-author numerous books, including the Chicken Soup for the Soul cookbook, once again integrating her love of food with her love of people sharing their ideas, wisdom, and stories. Don't ask what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive, and then do that, because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Howard Thurman, author, philosopher, theologian, and educator. Principle 40. Redefine Time. The world is entering a new time zone, and one of the most difficult adjustments people must make is in their fundamental concepts and beliefs about the management of time. Dan Sullivan, founder and president, The Strategic Coach. The most successful people I know create superior results, yet still maintain a balance among work, family, and recreation in their lives. To achieve this, they use a unique planning system that structures their time into three very different kinds of days that are pre-scheduled and assure the highest payoff for their efforts while still allowing abundant amounts of free time to pursue their personal interests. Dan Sullivan, president of The Strategic Coach, created a great system that I use called the Entrepreneurial Time System. It divides all your time into three kinds of days, focus days, buffer days, and free days. Focus Days A focus day is a day in which you spend at least 80% of your time operating in your core genius, or primary area of expertise, interacting with people or processes that give you the highest payoffs for the time you invest. To be successful, you must schedule more focus days and hold yourself accountable for producing the results. In the previous chapter, we discussed your core genius, that one thing you love to do and do so well, you hardly feel like charging people for it. It's effortless for you, and a whole lot of fun. And if you could make money doing it, you'd make it your lifetime's work. Your core genius is your natural talent, the area where you shine. My areas of genius are speaking, training, conducting seminars, coaching, writing, and editing. I do these things easily and well, and when I do them in a focused way, they're the things I get paid the most money for. For me, a focus day would be a day in which I spend 80% of the time speaking or leading a seminar for a fee, writing or editing a book, like this one, developing a new audio or video program, or coaching someone to achieve a greater level of success. For Janet Switzer, a focus day is consulting with clients on her revenue-generating systems, developing knowledge products, or speaking to a group of consultants and business owners about producing exponential leaps in income generation. Your focus day might be spent designing a new line of clothing, making sales calls, negotiating deals, producing a loan package to send to a mortgage lender, painting, performing or writing a grant proposal for a nonprofit organization. You want to do whatever you can to increase your number of free days. Buffer Days A buffer day is a day when you prepare and plan for a focus or free day, either by learning a new skill, 
locating a new resource, training your support team, delegating tasks and projects to others, or traveling to a worksite. Buffer days ensure that your focus days are as productive as possible. For me, a buffer day might be spent taking a seminar to improve my training skills, planning how to maximize sales of our books and audio programs on the Internet, rehearsing a new speech, reading potential stories for a new anthology book, or delegating a project to a member of my support team. Yours might be seeking out a mentor, developing a new sales presentation, writing a brochure, preparing your studio for a recording session, interviewing a new job candidate, training an assistant, attending an industry or professional convention, or writing an employee manual. The key is to group all your buffer day activities into the same day, so you are not diluting your focus days and free days. Free Days A free day extends from midnight to midnight and involves no work-related activity of any kind. It is a day completely free of business meetings, business-related phone calls, cell phone calls, emails, or reading work-related journals and documents. On a true free day, you are not available to your staff, clients, or students for any kind of contact except for true emergencies, injury, death, flood, or fire. The truth is that most so-called emergencies aren't emergencies at all. They're simply employees, co-workers, and family members who don't have, or haven't been given, enough training, responsibility, or authority to handle the unexpected situations that arise. You have to set clear boundaries, stop rescuing people, and trust that they can handle things by themselves. When you train your employer, staff, co-workers, and family not to bother you on your free days, it forces them to become more self-reliant. It also forces them to grow in ability and self-confidence. If you are consistent over time, people will eventually get the message. This is ultimately a good thing because it frees you up to have more free days and more focused days. Free means some days without the kids, too. The question often arises about what to do with the children. For the most part, you need to take some time away from your children on a regular basis. If you can't afford a babysitter, ask a trusted relative to take them. We've used both aunts and uncles and our nieces. If they're unavailable or unwilling, trade with other parents. You take their little ones for a weekend, and they take yours on a different weekend. And don't make the mistake of calling every hour to see how they're doing. Let go, trust, and take care of yourself for a change. Free days help you work harder and smarter. The value of regular free days is that you come back to your work refreshed and ready to tackle it with renewed vigor, enthusiasm, and creativity. To become truly successful, you need these breaks to allow yourself some distance from your normal day-to-day -day life so you can become more creative in solving problems and generating breakthrough ideas. I believe everyone's ultimate goal should be 130 to 150 days off each year. If you took every weekend off, doing no work whatsoever, you would instantly enjoy 104 vacation days. If you found another 48 free days in the form of long weekends, holiday weeks, two-week vacations, and other opportunities, you could easily enjoy 150 free days to rest, recharge, and rejuvenate with no laptops, no emails, no documents, and no contact with your staff, co-workers, or boss. It may take you a while to work up to that number, perhaps even years. But the main thing is to constantly work to increase your number of free days every year. Use your vacation time. According to the Travel Industry Association of America, the average vacation in 1997 was 7.1 days. In 2012, it was down to 4.3 days. Even more alarming, the Families and Work Institute reports that more than one-fourth of all American employees did not even use their vacation time. And a Harris Interactive survey found that 57% of Americans had unused vacation time, up to two weeks' worth, in 2011. Why? They were afraid that their job might not be there when they returned.
Compare that with the concept of free days, which actually makes you more rested, more productive, and more valuable to your employer. Jane Moyer, a former Xerox Business Services role model manager, and now at Starbucks, summarized perfectly the value of free days in this interview with Fast Company magazine. Every October, I spend some time on Cape Cod. I rent a cabin that's two blocks from the ocean, and I stay there for a week. The cabin has no phone or television. I don't get in my car. I don't listen to the radio, and I don't read newspapers. For the first couple of days, I go through withdrawal. But then I adjust. I cook, I read, I walk on the beach. It's absolutely glorious. On the way home, when I start thinking about work again, I see things differently. Work seems much less cluttered. One of the amazing things about getting away is that it helps me understand what's important and what's not.